guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. January 11th was our last upload date back when we were working on that Studebaker ice car. And uh, we've been busy. I've been really busy. We bought another building uh, next to my shop and working on that. And uh, just really haven't had a lot of time. Kind of let the channel sit dormant now for the last six months. But... I got a bunch of videos uh, edited already and scheduled to go on, and I figured what better way to bring back the channel after six months of dormancy than show you guys the 2090 car again and tell you about some of the improvements I made on it over the last six months that you guys have not seen. All right, guys, so I did a lot of stuff to this thing that I really wish I would have filmed and I didn't, um, specifically engine-wise. Number one, a lot of you might see already, there's a Holley sitting on top. This Holley is off my 93 Lumina four-door that I converted to rear-wheel drive back when I was 18 years old. Uh, it's a 750 double pumper. I already had um, power valve eliminators in the thing. I got a 1090 Elgin cam, big lift, pretty lumpy, and I always tend to remove my power valves uh, when I get up into the bigger cam stuff. Some people agree with that. Some people disagree. For me, it works. So I already had the power valves removed, which is perfect for a blower application. Um, I didn't have to mess with any of that. I didn't need a blower carb with the vacuum line going down underneath to, to boost reference it. It was pretty much drop on, and I'm going to tell you, that made a huge world of difference right off the bat in that Edelbrock. Um, I messed around with the metering rods in that Edelbrock quite a bit, and uh, basically couldn't get it to do anything on this setup. And this pretty much bolted right on, and I jetted it just a little bit, and it runs great. I also put a uh, AFR air fuel ratio gauge in there, which right off the bat, I fouled out the O2 sensor. Uh, the jets were way too big. I jetted it up quite a bit right away from what I had and fouled out the O2 sensor. So right now it's read reading like 14.7 all the time. Well, we know that's not right. It's not really moving through the spectrum and not uh, telling us anything but it's in there so i'll have to get another o2 for it all right so other than the carburetor and the air fuel gauge i did actually go through the entire bottom end of the engine it is all brand new underneath i still have the swirl port heads sitting on top uh they were redone there's just uh there's a little bit better valve springs on them i put the same cam in the bottom end that was in it before uh just a 480 480 lift uh, cam just a white box chinese cam but i, I kind of like them so that went back in still has the gear to gear in it but the rotating assembly um and i did have a single piece rear main in here now it's two piece rear main uh i don't know exactly what the crank was but it's all forged stuff the crank was out of a late model i believe uh you know race car uh h-beam eagle rods and brand new wishco disc blower pistons in it so yeah a huge upgrade in the bottom end of this thing to support this and i am getting 10 pounds of boost out of it right now 10 pounds of boost never changed the pulleys or anything at about 7500 rpms 7500 uh, eight grand she pushes 10 pounds um it, it runs pretty good. There's still a little bobble at the lower end, which is going to be carburetor, but I really didn't mess with it that much. Um, it's kind of an ornery pig when it's cold out yet, but uh, once she warms up, she runs pretty good. One thing I did notice, too, when pulling it apart uh, to, to rebuild the bottom end, when I had the blowers off, I am getting some fuel sitting in here. Um, when I took them apart, there was just, you know, probably a quarter inch of fuel sitting down at the bottom of this L. I really should have made that a little more smooth coming into the blower, but the lower end down here, um, as dry as can be, that, that seems to be working just fine. I know there were some guys saying that's never going to flow right, you know, all that stuff, but uh, I figured, hell, it's boosted. It's going to push it in anyway. So, yeah, really the only place it's puddling was up in here, and I don't know. I, I can deal with it. What happens is usually I'll idle it up, you know, warm the car up and take off, and when you just start taking off, she kind of bobbles and belches some black smoke, I think because you start basically drawing more air, and it just kind of pulls that little puddle up up through the supercharger and burns it off uh, when you when you start accelerating. So... Maybe in the future I could do something with that, but honestly, for what I'm going to use it for, um, which we'll talk about that too, but for what I'm going to use it for, I can deal with that problem, just clear it out and go. All right, well, I mean, that's already some huge changes already. Fuel system, uh, the whole bottom end's rebuilt on it, got some fresh front tires on the thing for safety reasons, because if you remember from that other video, those were like see-through. Uh, it's also about time for a new set of rears on it too. We were doing some burnouts here in the barnyard, so we'll find something for that. Now, here's the story on this car and the reason why so much has happened to it. I really wish I would have filmed it for you guys too. But we went down to Cletus and Cars Indy with this car for the burnout competition. And long story short, um, 
I built that engine the week before. Pulled the motor out on Monday, put the whole lower end together on here, put it all back in the car, got it running, built a new fuel cell under the car. Oh, that's one other thing too, if you guys remember from the other video, if you can see through the window, the patch is welded back in where that uh, basically lawnmower fuel cell was sticking up into the car. All welded back in, sealed up, and I did build a steel tank, a temporary steel tank underneath here. You can see my crude straps and everything. I think it's about 11 gallons. And got all that put in here. Now, we got it running really good. I made two laps around the block. Came back, dumped the break-in oil in the engine, put brand new 2050 in it. Went out in the barnyard over here, which we'll probably do some burnouts here shortly too, where the Cordoba sits out in the barnyard. Lit them up, held it at about, uh, I don't know, 7, 7,500 for a little while. Did a smoky burnout up in the third gear with these awesome old heavy-duty bias plies that uh, gentleman gave me. Thanks for those, bud. Um, and basically, everything ran really good. It checked out nice. Uh, we went around the block, had plenty of power, was running awesome. We threw it on the trailer and took off. It was crunch time. Headed down through Illinois, uh, got into Indiana, and we went to the show the next day, drove around the parking lot. Everything ran great in it, seemed good. Went out on the track, pretty much floored it, shifted in the second gear, smoking them, running about eight grand. I really need to put a rev limiter in here too if I'm going to be doing more burnouts uh, because she just wants to scream all the way up. Hit it at about eight grand, let off the brake, come on the track, whipped about three donuts, which uh, that's another thing. I'm going to be putting some different seats in here too because I was falling right out of them. We got these stupid blue seats in here. I don't even know what those were out of. I bought them at a swap meet and uh, I'm back way too far. I never even thought about it before I got there, but when I started whipping Brody's out there, uh, yeah, I was falling right out of the seat and my foot was lifting off the throttle pedal every time I whipped the car. This thing whips pretty good with that short wheelbase, but I do have some plastic buckets over there that we're going to upgrade into this car too uh, after we cage it. It's going to get a full cage as well. So anyway, back to the story. Light it up, go out onto the track, whip three donuts, and bleh, dies out. Out of fuel. Suck the bulls right dry on the carburetor. I have three-eighths fuel line running from the front to back, welded into the tank. And the only two things I can think of, well, number one, I guess I really didn't consider fuel system before we went. I really should have. I guess I didn't know that this was going to draw that much. I probably should have. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's pushing a lot of boost. But uh, that stock pump down there, it's either that's not keeping up or, or I may have put a pinhole in my 3 a tube that I welded into that tank for a pickup and maybe it's sucking a little air from the back. So currently I have not fixed that problem yet and it really doesn't do it unless you hold the throttle wide open for more than uh, you know a minute straight. So something that's going to have to be addressed soon but I do want to upgrade to all AN fittings half inch line and build an aluminum tank for the back of this thing once we start working on it again. So to finish that story off I go out there did the three donuts three or four donuts it died, it backfired loudly through the pop plate in the intake, which I am really glad I put that thing on there because it's happened a couple times now and uh, it probably saved my intake, saved some welds or didn't balloon my intake anyway, so that's a good thing. Anyway, backfired really loud, cranked and cranked and cranked, it fired back up. I kind of rolled forward really slow and punched it again, whipped two more donuts and right when I was going around the wall or by the wall, it died with the nose towards the wall and the car kind of lurched forward and I knew then and there it wasn't going to happen. Not enough fuel. I knew the problem right away, and uh, it's a shame. It kind of sucked. Probably try to bring it back again this year unless we build something else. Um, but that's kind of the story of Indiana. Now, I was kind of ticked off when it happened. I knew what it was. Got the car fired back up. Laid rubber all the way off the track. Came out. Cletus was standing there like, oh, man. And I'm, yeah, it sucks. You know, I slapped the thing together really quick. Pulled in the pits and we went home. On the way home, the fuel pump went out in my Suburban in the, on the tollway in Chicago. So another fuel issue and uh, basically we had to have a good friend come down there and trailer us back. Really appreciate that. He brought a, a Duramax van on a trailer. We unloaded his van off the trailer, put my Suburban on the trailer, put the van on our trailer with the Sunbird on it and we came home. It was a long weekend. Very long weekend and... Uh, it was totally worth it. I can't wait to go back again, hopefully with this thing, or like I said, maybe we'll build something else. But we, I got back. I took all the photos and my videos and everything off my GoPros and everything, got them on the computer, getting ready to edit that video. Uh, and I don't even remember when Cletus and Cars Indy was, but uh, 
it was a couple months ago and it kind of kind of left a sour taste in my mouth because I put everything all my files on the computer and the entire flash drive got corrupted and I lost all that footage for you guys I have nothing except one cell phone video so uh I'll probably show you guys that at the end of the video and uh it was a good time good experience a lot of headache throughout the trip but uh we're getting there on the car we got a lot of things figured out like I said so you know what I'm gonna stop rambling now Let's fire this thing up. I bought a brand new timing light because my timing light got wrecked along the line somewhere too when we were setting this up. Bought a brand new timing light. I'm going to do a quick check on the timing on this thing and we're going to jump in this sucker, take another ride around the block. I'll show you what it's got now and uh, maybe we'll come back and I kind of hate to blow the rest of these off. Like I said, they're almost gone and they're nice rollers for it for now. Maybe we'll shove these biases back on and light it up for 40, 50 seconds and uh, I'd hate to put it in a lean condition on purpose, but... Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do it and see how long it takes for that carb to run out of fuel again. Let's time this thing. All right. All right. Well, I think I got the distributor cranked down pretty hard. I didn't want it. Oh, maybe I don't. All right. Well, that may have moved anyway during the abuse I put it through. So let's fire this thing up. And see what she does. All right, I got a mark zero on that balancer because I can't see it. I'm sorry, on the timing tab. All right, so. 480. All right, there we go. All right, fire it up again. Ten degrees. Ten degree face. All right, too much. pulling like 28 degrees total timing that might be a little bit much with 10 pounds so uh i know a lot of you guys said run 20 total and you're good i'm gonna back this off a little bit it died out on me you could see it was starting to load up back this off a little bit maybe try to set the base at four or five i think that's what we had originally uh when we ran it that first time around the block and then it pulled like a total of 21 out of it so get this thing fired up again and total on the head we're pulling a total of 28 with 10 degree base and now we are five degree base pulling a total of 20 degrees up in the r's probably i didn't even really look at the r's probably around 3500 four grand that's where the mechanical weights and the distributor max out you know some of you guys in the comments from from australia you guys got us saying some weird stuff around here Distributors became dizzies. Aluminum became aluminium. It's great. Come on, baby. I'm gonna leave the air cleaner off and the hood off just cause uh, my element was getting pretty dirty in here. And uh, I also got to weld a tab on the bottom of the scoop. It, it likes to start turning when you're cruising down the road. So I'll just leave her off for now. Should be good to go.
guys can see the boost gauge or not, but here we go. Runs good, runs cool, drives good. Uh, you know, this car, you guys, you got to remember too, is uh, it's still pretty sketchy, man. Uh, it's pretty rotten in the front end and stuff. The, the way the tires looked off that back camera and stuff, you definitely can see why I don't want to be making a full rip in it, going 100 miles an hour in the thing. Uh, that's asking for, that's asking for it. But it runs good. We have a good base here to work with now. Um, we got a bottom end to support the boost, and I think. I don't know if you guys could see it off this GoPro on my head. I think we only cracked about six pounds. The thing is, by the time I'm, you know, shifting out of first into second, you know, almost at red line, the thing's only making about six at that point. So what we're gonna do here is, uh, real quick, we're gonna grab some tires and change them out. And let's go out in the barnyard just to prove to you guys that this thing can pull 10 pounds of boost with two stock pulleyed. 3800 Eaton 90 blowers. I want to show you guys another thing here too real quick. It's humid out today. As a matter of fact, there's quite a uh, quite a bit of overcast. That's actually all the smoke in the sky from apparently all the forest fires in uh in Oregon and Canada coming down this way. But when it's really humid out and my Buick uh, with the straight 8 does the exact same thing as this car when it's super humid and you're pulling that air through check out the top hat and i wish i had my temp gauge here we'll do it a different day but look at this on top of this aluminum here or aluminium look at that that is ice cold right now from the fuel being sucked in through that upper now the superchargers they're warm they're about you know, you know what they would averagely be on like a, on, on a pontiac or you know anything with the 3800 but this right here ice freaking cold condensation everywhere and both sides obviously where the fuel's dropping in down here at the bottom this is substantially cooler here at the back than the actual supercharger case. Uh, obviously, the heat's going to be made here, but uh, yeah, it hasn't transferred from here to here yet because it's just so cool up here. Kind of neat. You know what? After looking at these a little bit, they are pretty shot. I don't think I'm going to change them. Let's run out there with these on and see what happens. We'll just crank it up for, for 10, 15 seconds. If we blow one, we blow one. Let's go give her a whirl. Here we go, guys. Well, there you have it, guys. That was second gear. We did kiss 10 pounds of boost at 70... Probably 7,400 RPMs in second gear. We were at 10 pounds. But it, it, it was pretty good, you know, not too bad for what the setup is, I guess, for just this homemade deal. Um, tires are pretty much shot on the back of it now, and I'm gonna put this thing back away because there's some other work to be done. I still heard a little bit of a rattle on this thing uh, up in the high R's there. I don't, I don't care for it. Um, we're at, like I said, 20 degrees total timing right now. We might have to pull a couple, geez, that rubber's getting to me, pull a couple more degrees out of it yet too, so. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. We're going to be back with this thing, caging it, um, getting the 6AL programmable in it, all that stuff, make it uh, more user-friendly, more roadworthy, and more specifically, if we could just get the cage in here and throw a set of slicks on the back, we're going to go down to WIR and make a few passes in this thing and see what it actually does. So thanks for watching, guys. I got a lot of videos coming up shortly here. Everything's edited and scheduled. I appreciate you guys waiting. Thanks for watching. Till next time.
Looks like it's got two superchargers on it.